Favor say aye. aye. Those opposed say no. no. Depending on the chair, the ayes have it. Recorded vote. Recorded vote has been requested pursuant to Clause 6 of Rule 18. Further proceedings on the amendment offered by the gentlelady from Georgia will be postponed. It is now in order to consider amendment number 49 printed in House Report 118 through 142. For what purpose does the gentlewoman from Wyoming seek recognition? I have an amendment at the desk. The clerk will designate the amendment. Amendment number 49 printed in House Report number 118-142 offered by Ms. Hageman of Wyoming. Pursuant to House Resolution 583, the gentlewoman from Wyoming, Ms. Hageman, and a member opposed each, and a member opposed, each will control five minutes. The chair recognizes the gentlewoman from Wyoming. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I rise today in support of my Amendment 49, which would require that all documents and correspondence of the Countering Extremism Working Group are provided to the Select Subcommittee on the Weaponization of the Federal Government and the Committee on Armed Services. I am offering this amendment to build upon a larger concept and theme within the House NDAA this year, ending the politicization and weaponization of the DOD. I am proud to stand with my colleagues here in the House and fight for an NDAA which is fo focused on war fighting, readiness, and lethality, for an NDAA which conducts meaningful oversight into the political issues which have infiltrated the DOD in recent years. Through our work in the Judiciary Committee and on the Select Subcommittee on the Weaponization of the Federal Government, we have discovered that rampant abuse of power is not confined to one agency or department, nor is it limited to one subject area. In the wake of a partisan political persecution spurred by the events on January 6th, extremism or domestic violence extremism has been misconstrued to include a wider group of individuals to serve as a predicate for state surveillance, invasion of privacy, and in some instances, deprivation of rights. We first uncovered this within the DOJ with the padding of DVE crime statistics, which was done to support the political statements of policymakers. In my first seven months in Congress, I have had the opportunity to uncover some of these abuses. However, there are some legacy issues which date back to my time, before my time in Congress, to a time when true oversight for the purpose of the protection of the rights of Americans took a backseat to the politicization agenda of some influential leaders on the other side of the aisle. One such issue was other potential abuses of extremism in the government, including the DOD Countering Extremism Working Group. My amendment would ensure that both committees receive documentation from the DOD about the work done in the Countering Extremism Working Groups so we can provide proper oversight. I hope there is nothing there. I hope we find that the DOD abused no serviceman or woman's rights and that this was an exercise in legitimately protecting their own force. But without confirming this through the evidence, I cannot trust that the Biden administration and the DOD under Secretary Austin did the right thing simply because they have failed to earn the trust of the American people due to routine exposure of wrongdoing and abuse. I urge all of my colleagues to support this amendment and I reserve the balance of my time. Woman reserves. For what purpose does the gentleman from New York seek recognition? <clears throat> Mr. Chair, rise in strong opposition to the amendment. The gentleman is recognized for five minutes. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. I yield myself uh, as much time as I may need. Uh, Mr. Chair, there's a lot of buzzwords, complicated sub-working groups and weaponization and all these uh, sort of language that may hide what is happening here. But I want to be crystal clear about what this amendment does. As someone who served in uniform proudly to combat deployments, this weakens our military, it weakens our national security because it essentially tries to uh, sweep back under the rug what is a growing, more dramatic problem of uh, extremism of many kinds within our Department of Defense, something that has had bipartisan agreement. And rather than keeping that bipartisan, sober tenor to the debate, uh, this amendment hypocritically, in my opinion, actually politicizes it by re referring it to, unfortunately, a subcommittee that is 
think, broadly known for, to, uh, to operate in that way. But let's be clear what's happening in our Department of Defense. Bias, discrimination, hate, and extremism threaten the safety of all communities and institutions, and our military is no exception. I think we can all agree one extremist in the ranks is one too many. And the US intelligence community's annual threat assessment once again concluded transnational, racially, and ethnically motivated violent extremists continue to pose the most lethal threat the most lethal threat to U.S. persons and interests, and a significant threat to a number of U.S. allies and partners. The Countering Extremism Working Group has functioned exactly as intended. It should continue its work to ensure that extremism has no place in our military. They are doing good, necessary work. We must continue to, as members of Congress and Americans, hold the principle that this work should be nonpartisan. It should not be uh, under, the, under the, the, the sort of heated, politicized rhetoric that I fear uh, this amendment would put it under. So I stand in strong opposition and encourage my colleagues to vote against this amendment and yield back, Mr. Chair. Does the gentleman reserve? I, I, my apologies. Reserve. The, the reserve. The gentleman reserves. The Thank gentlewoman you. from Wyoming is recognized. Yes, this bill is nothing more than related to transparency and oversight. We have had FBI whistleblowers who have testified before the Judiciary and the Select Committee as to how the FBI is padding its DVE statistics. We want to ensure that the Countering Extremism Working Group uh, is not just another way in which our government has been weaponized against the American people. What I cannot understand is why any Democrat would oppose transparency and good government. And with that, I reserve. The gentlewoman reserves. The gentleman from New York is recognized. Uh, Mr. Chair, this is not a Democrat or Republican thing. This is about the American people having pride in and sending the message to all members, the millions of members in the Department of Defense, that we are proud of them, we support them, we support the work that our Department of Defense is doing, and we are not intending to politicize it in the way that this amendment does. I, I reserve the balance of my time. Gentleman reserves. The gentleman from Wyoming is recognized. Well, thank you. I, I, again, this bill is about transparency and oversight. We all support our troops. Uh, this isn't about not supporting our troops. This is about ensuring that the Countering Extremism Working Group has not been politicized. Nothing more and nothing less. With that, I reserve. The gentlewoman reserves. The gentleman from New York, New York is recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chair. What's clear when you see how this uh, weaponization of the federal government uh, subcommittee has operated, sadly to me as someone who loves our country, it has become a deeply partisan body. So with all due respect to my colleague, I, I don't agree with your characterization in any way. And the other piece here that is not being spoken and said, anti-Semitism. Uh, violent white nationalism are on the rise in the Department of Defense, and this working group is directly focused on countering that. Politicizing that work undercuts that important work, puts our troops at risk, and puts our national security at risk. I reserve the balance of my time. General the gentlewoman from I, uh, I would note for the record that the gentleman on the other side just slandered uh, the uh, men and women in, in, in uh, service in, in uniform uh, by making the accusations that he has. And again, what I'm talking about here is simply providing us with the documentation. This isn't about interfering in the work that the, that the uh, working group has done. It's simply to oversee and make sure that, it, that, that, that that particular working group is not being weaponized against our men and women in service. As I said, we may not find anything at all. They may have done exactly what they were, uh, th what they were required to do. But at the same time, there is nothing wrong with this body overseeing and ensuring that these types of groups are operating the way that they should. With that, I reserve. The gentlewoman reserves. The gentleman from New York, New York is recognized. Mr. Chair, uh, I'm, I'm prepared to, to close and, the gentleman and reserves. Uh, the gentlewoman from Wyoming is recognized. You know, so again, the, 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 the word of the day is transparency. Any, or, any group that is within the Department of Defense, we should have oversight. And that's all that this bill does. So with that, I urge my colleagues to vote for this amendment. Thank you. The gentlewoman yields. And the gentleman from New York is recognized. Mr. Chair, in, in brief, 
while I understand the spirit of what my colleague is saying, there has to be reasonable lines at which we cannot say there is unlimited resources to dedicate to unlimited oversight of every uh, conspiracy theory uh, that may be out there. So I would reassert in closing, dealing with extremism cannot be about political or ideological litmus tests, but practical threats to the operations and values of our military. Uh, and I uh, yield back. The gentleman yields. The question is on the amendment offered by the gentlewoman from Wyoming. Those in